Welcome to worship. We are so happy that you have joined us today, whether you are in pajamas or not. Reverend Jen is away this week to focus on a family matter, and so we are joined by some other familiar faces as worship leaders. You will see me and Brian, obviously. Gretchen will be providing our children's message, and we have three uh, volunteers from the Board of Deacons who have agreed to be our liturgists and help co-lead worship this week. As we continue what is now our seventh Sunday worship by video, I am reminded that what we are doing is not virtual worship. It is not remote worship. It's worship. For wherever two or more are gathered, so is our creator. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are so grateful to gather with you for some time of stillness, of familiarity, of prayer, and now of song. Welcome to worship. This Sunday was supposed to be Music Appreciation Sunday, so in recognition of that, we're going to sing Pilgrim Hymnal number 35, verses 1, 5, and 6. Everlasting God, in these times of uncertainty, when each day brings news of change and disruption, we look for comfort and constancy, for things that endure. We wish for companionship in our isolation and for familiar faces and rituals. Continue to abide with us even when we don't recognize you. Speak to us even if we're too consumed with worry to hear you. Help us to recognize your enduring presence in every breath and hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi everyone. First I wanna start off by saying how much I miss you all and seeing, miss seeing you all in person. Uh, but I hope to be able to see you all in person soon, and I hope that all of you are well. So today, I'd like to talk with you about the word comfort. So um, when you think of the word comfort, I wonder if you, like me, think of the word comfortable. 
comfortable to me has so many things and so many things that come to mind. So um, when I'm comfortable, I feel very at ease. I feel very myself. I feel like I can be myself. When I'm comfortable, I'm usually wearing clothes that are comfortable and I can move in and not feel restricted. Um, and also comfort and comfortable to me can also um, be a feeling, something that I feel. So if I feel comfortable or if I feel comfort, I might look to some things to help me with that. Some things like my friends here. This is Coco, this is Sydney's, my daughter Sydney's, comes from her bed, I stole it for this. This is her Eeyore and our little beagle guy and my stuffed animal that I've had since I was a little girl. Her name is Marianne. So these things can bring me comfort So I, because I can hold her and I can feel her and she's soft um, and that helps me feel comfort and comfortable. The other things that might help you or me feel comfort, comfort and comfortable are things to eat or drink, like tea, or perhaps some sweet treat <laughs> that you might like. So all of these things can help us feel comfortable and comfort. And when we need to have a time in which maybe we're out of sorts or things aren't going our way or we're having a difficult time, Comfort and comfortable things can be very helpful. One of today's lessons and scripture readings is going to talk about how the disciples, after Jesus's resurrection, where he rose, it was a very a kind of uncomfortable time for them. They didn't know what to do, didn't know what to expect, uh, didn't know where to be. Jesus was their leader, and now he wasn't really there to lead them anymore. But in this one particular scripture reading, they are leaving where Jesus had been um, put in the tomb and uh, was no longer there and walking to another place. While walking there, they did encounter another traveler who introduced himself and they walked together and they talked together and they told this traveler about all the things that had happened with Jesus and how he was such a wonderful uh, prophet and speaker of God's word and um, and how wonderful he was and how they were kind of lost without him. Well, when they got to their destination, uh, the traveler was going to continue on and go on, but these disciples said, no, no, come stay with us, come eat with us. And when they did, um, they sat down and Jesus broke bread, just like he did on that very last supper that he was with them. And all of a sudden they were like, oh, it's you. We know who you are. And then he disappeared. But even though he disappeared from their sight at that time, they thought back to their journey with him along, along the path and along the road when they were discussing things with him and telling him about him, basically himself. And they realized that there was a feeling that they had had, a feeling of comfort and a feeling of reassurance when he was there. So I hope that there are things that you can find to give you comfort in these days when we have so many things that are, are different and so many things that are um, just not the way we're used to. Um, so I hope that in these days you can find comfort in maybe some things that you have. Um, may it be a stuffed animal, may it be food, may it be clothing, may it be a pet um, or something uh, like that. But I also hope that you always know that you can find comfort in Jesus and in God. And they're always going to be there for you and always going to be able to be something that you can go to for comfort. So I hope you all are doing well and I hope to be able to see you soon. Oftentimes, I am embarrassed to admit that when I read the scripture for the week, which is either set lectionary or has been decided weeks in advance, that I'm surprised at how prescient the readings are. And I'm embarrassed then at my surprise. Because one of the most important questions I think to ask when reading scripture or when writing a sermon is what is the message from God in this ancient text for our world today? So, so, so often I read a passage and think, well, obviously this is the text for today. As if I've forgotten that the Holy Spirit is alive and well and guiding us in every aspect of daily living. And I'm embarrassed by how often I am surprised when our scripture and our world collides.
and this week was no exception. We are closing in on two months of quarantining and isolating, and we have no clear idea just how much longer it's going to continue like this. We know to be patient, which can seem impossible some days. We know we should stay home, which seems impossible when we glimpse these rare spring days we've had lately. We know that it is important to take care of our bodies, to have meaningful movement, and to care for our mental and spiritual health, all of which is acutely affected in our new daily living. For myself, some days are easy. I limit or completely avoid news because new news isn't coming as fast as it used to last month. So taking a few days off doesn't set me back that much in terms of my awareness of what's going on in the world. But some days are harder. I eat more than one serving of pasta and I scroll news outlets often or constantly, anxiously looking for any new news, although I, I doubt I will find any. But I recognize that I am seeking something to comfort me on those difficult days. One thing that has been all over the news is quarantine baking. Banana breads, sourdough bread, breakfast bread, sandwich bread, dessert breads, you name it. It seems not only do we have time on our hands, but that we also have a desire for those comfort foods that help us to feel calm and peaceful and comfortable again. We're looking for something to rest in, something that is constant and won't uproot our lives by its presence. There is a reminder in our first scripture this week of such a thing that is constant. This epistle, this letter, addresses followers of Jesus who have hope in the resurrection and who seek to follow the new ways that Jesus taught. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord endures forever. That word is the good news that was announced to you. All grass withers, all flowers fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. There are some things in this life that will endure forever. Not this virus, not physical distancing, not even banana bread will last forever, even if it lasts a day. The word that is the good news in this letter is that the word, the message of the Lord will never fade, will never wither. The message from God will always be with us. Why am I still so surprised then when the message of comfort that is so clearly and simply stated in our scripture happens this week? What a reminder that in all this newness, this constant adapting, unrest, and unease about the future, that there is at least one thing that will never change and will always endure. There is a message from God in this ancient text that in our ever-changing lives, God endures. Hallelujah. In our gospel text, it is still Resurrection Day. It is the third day after Jesus' crucifixion, and two friends are on a journey. Good morning. This week's gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35, the walk to Amasis. Now, on the same day, Two of them were going to a village called Amasis, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other as you walk along? They stood still looking sad. 
Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all people. And now, how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and they did not find his body there. They came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day now is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? The same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the 11 and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told them what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. I think these friends have a lot in common with where we are in the world right now. Like them, as followers of Jesus, we are an Easter people. We believe that there is new life even after such deep grief, but perhaps we too find ourselves not yet embracing the resurrection. It's like we too are walking around waiting for the presence of new life to be readily apparent to us, maybe in the form of a vaccine. Two friends are walking home, maybe six feet apart, and talking about grieving the recent events. Maybe there are recent events you talk about and grieve with your friends. I wonder if you would close your eyes for a few moments and imagine that you are on this road or on a path or on a hike. Maybe you are the unnamed friend, maybe you are alone. But imagine you are walking along the road on a journey from grief, anxiety, or even death. You are on a journey from this place of uncertainty to someplace else. Imagine you are walking along the way and a heavenly stranger comes alongside you and asks, What's on your mind these days? Imagine yourself being honest, stating simply and clearly what it is that is occupying your thoughts. Imagine yourself listing all of the things that have been consuming your waking thoughts and filling your restless nights. Imagine as this heavenly stranger walking alongside you listens deeply with love from the heart. Imagine this heavenly stranger then asks you, how is it with your soul? Imagine yourself being so honest, 
stating simply and clearly what it is your soul yearns for. Imagine articulating the deepest desires of your soul, gratitude for gifts, and the most secret and earnest prayers you wish God would hear. Imagine as this heavenly stranger walks alongside you, listening deeply with love from the heart. Imagine looking into the face of this heavenly stranger and saying, stay with me a while longer and let's have some food. Open your eyes. When the friends had dinner and broke bread together, they recognized the heavenly stranger as their friend and their teacher. Through the familiarity of that ritual, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them. Their souls were fed with the celebration that they too had now seen the resurrected Jesus. It wasn't along the journey, walking for miles and miles. It was in sitting at the table together, familiar elements, familiar people, familiar rituals. And in that they saw the living and the everlasting God. Perhaps you've seen resurrection, new life this week and have all the spiritual comfort food you need. Perhaps resurrection won't be real to you until we all gather again, familiar faces, familiar rituals. But the things that endure in this in-between time are the things that comfort, coming back to the word of God each week and being the people of God for a world so ready for comfort and for the deep love from the heart. This is hard, and yet this too shall pass. This is our now, but it is not our future, because we are a resurrection people. So Easter people, raise your voices. Be a heavenly companion to someone along the way, someone living in fear, doubt, uncertainty, or anxiety, for we all are at some point. Be a holy friend to someone along the way and accept the comfort of those feeding your soul comfort food. For the things that endure are the things that comfort. God's word, God's presence, and God's people. Our second hymn is Pilgrim Hymnal number 286, which goes with our Luke 24 passage. It says their eyes were open. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
Hear this benediction from Reverend Henry Sloan Coffin. May God grant you the grace never to sell yourself short. Grace to risk something big for the sake of something good. Grace, because the world is now too big for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So go now from this time of worship, loving deeply, giving and accepting comfort for heavenly strangers are all around and you are one of them. Amen.